Hi, this is Angelina Asante. Welcome to this episode of South Florida Online News. Today we have Terry Ballow, who is the president of the Florida Drowning Prevention Foundation. Hi, Terry. Hi, Angelina. Well, thank you for coming on. I know you have a big event, the Aqua Ball, coming up in a few weeks, and that's always a really fun time. But it's, it was born of some difficult circumstances because you kind of talk about like how you got started in this business. Yes. I uh, I lived on Marco Island for 15 years and I met this family at this little uh, play, play school place I was working at. And um, they had this little girl, Madison, she was only two and a half. And the mom was a nurse and they were at this party, this pool party at an assisted living facility. And Madison had had the little floaties on her arms and she had come in the house. The, po- the party was over and the mom was greeting people out the front door, had taken off the floaties and someone else was supposed to be watching Madison. And I guess they lost track of her. When the mom came back in the house, the little girl, they found her at the bottom of the pool. Mm-hmm. And I knew her. She was two and a half and my daughter was three and a half at the time. And, uh, you know, me and my friends, we all went to the funeral and it was just horrible. And I had never been to anything like that. I had never been to a funeral of a little girl, and especially that it was under the circumstance that it was preventable. And so I just felt in my heart that I needed to do something about that, you know, in the years to come. And so we did. And um, we decided that some friends and I, we decided we'd start a Kiwanis Club that would initially make its mission to prevent childhood drowning. And we did that for five years. And then the demand for swim lessons and water safety and just funding was getting greater and greater that we said, well, let's close the Kiwanis Club and we'll start a separate 501c3 that's just focused on drowning prevention. So that's how we started the Florida Drowning Prevention Foundation. So I bought tickets for the Aqua Ball, as I do every year, because it's so much fun. I mean, it's a great cause, but it actually is a really good time, too. And when I asked my friend to go with me, because it's football season, so you won't see my husband for a few months. Uh, when okay. I asked my friend to go with me, she's like, what is this? And when I sent her your website and I started looking through the statistics, I was really upset. And and you have some numbers from the state of Florida. And I did not realize that not only are most of the deaths for children under three years old are drowned, yep. but there's a lot of uh, like Airbnb listed a lot of rental properties I never even thought about that so people are renting like vacation homes and they're having horrible things happen can you kind of speak about like safety prevention prevention sure I mean can you imagine going on vacation and not coming home with your child no Uh, I can't I can't even imagine that and and that is because it's getting worse it's actually getting worse um, like you said, not only is it three year olds, 70, over 75% of the drownings that are happening in this state are with three year olds or younger. And so these families are coming down here. You know, maybe they don't have bodies of water near them. They're, they're in inland properties and they don't have water or ponds or canals like we do. And um, they're coming here and they're staying in a rental property that probably has no door alarms. They have no child-proof fences, so the child gets out. They don't even know that they're on the lanai or they're out in the backyard. It's really sad. And the majority of the drownings that occur in the state are occurring, and I'm sure as you've read, says got out of the home undetected. Right. Well, right. So that's why our foundation gives away door alarms for free. People just pay $4 and change for postage and handling, and we send them door alarms. It's so important, you know, because then at least you know if your child has gotten out of the house. That's if the door is shut. Now, if you leave the door open and the child gets out, you're not going to know that. But, um, you know, there's other layers like a pool fence. If you have a pool fence around then the the child can't get through those mesh fences. It's impossible. But, you know, with the Airbnbs and the vacation properties, I know that there have been a lot of, um, like, water safety 
foundations and companies that have tried working with real estate agents and real estate companies to say, hey, look, if you're going to, you know, sponsor renting a home, then you need to have these safety mechanisms in place, at least door alarms, you know? Yeah, I also, we, so we have a waterfront house, but when we moved in this house, um, and we didn't, we, it's not like we had kids walking around, but we had like L locks installed super high yeah. on the doors and sure. had alarms put on every door and window because, you know, we have people in, in and out of the house, you know, we have family and, and everything else, but yeah. even like, I think a lot of people think, oh, my kid's a baby or my kid's this young, they're not going to think about but if you think about kids, they learn from observing and they're going to one of the first things you're going to want to do is is slide open that door. And it only takes I don't know what the time is, but I think a few seconds and seconds. Yeah, seconds. And they go down and people think it's like the movies, you know, they're going to be screaming. I can't swim or whatever. No, they they go in the pool and they breathe like they would normally breathe. Mm. And that's it. And they drown. Um, we have friends, we have a friend here in Naples whose son drowned at a pool party. That occurs as well um, with a lot of people around the pool. They're, they're, everybody's thinking that somebody else is watching the child right. and they're not. And so then you have a lot of kids in the pool and then they horse around and before you know it, one of them's under the water and no one's paying attention. And so that's why we advocate for water watchers. They take 15 minutes, an adult will take 15 minutes of their time and sit at the edge of the pool and do nothing but watch the water. Not on their cell phones, not talking to other adults. They just sit there and they watch the water and make sure. And if you do that every 15 minutes, you take turns. What's the big deal? Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, I've even seen. So a lot of the stories I'm reading are even like local ponds or they'll get yeah. canals. So when we think pool safety, but there's a lot of these kids, unfortunately, that are drowning in other ways, too. But when you were talking about the parent on the phone, um, I read an article recently where a mom was on her phone and giving her kid a bath. And I'm like, the kid's right in front of you. The kid's right. Wow. You. And you're on yeah. your phone in a, in a yeah. bathroom. So I, yes. I, it can really happen anywhere, even with somebody right there if you're distracted. That's right. Exactly. So that, you know, the main thing is supervision. You know, if you have, and, and what happens is a lot of children drown when you're not prepared for them to be in the water. So for instance, if you're taking your child to a pool or you expect to be in the pool or you expect to be in the ocean, you're much more apt to be watching that child because you're right there. That's like your event for the day. But you have this, dangerous thing in your backyard you can't just expect that the child is going to know not to go in the water they, that's where they want to go they've had fun before right. so naturally they just want to go in the water so you as an adult have to be the one to protect them from that water with the door alarms with the pool fences and with active supervision and just knowing that we're not perfect you know, the, these drownings happen to all families in all walks of life. I mean, look at um, Bodie, the skier, Bodie Miller, who lost his daughter. She drowned. They were in a friend's house. That's the other thing. As you read those statistics, children are visiting their aunt's house or their grandmother's house or they've been at a friend's house. Well, that friend's house may not have door alarms. They may not have pole fences. So you just have to be really diligent when you have a child around water. And the other thing is the swim lessons. That's the most important thing, are swim lessons. You know, the kids, they have to learn how to swim. This way, if they fall in the pool, even by accident, they'll know how to save themselves and how to get to the edge. Well, I wanted, that's another statistic that's amazing on your website. So I did not realize how many scholarships you've given away <laughs> to families. It's, it's really impressive. Thank you. Yes. Just in the month of August, we just had a board meeting on Tuesday night. And just in the month of August, we approved 38 swim scholarships. So now if then, I'm sorry, go ahead. And then in July, I think we had 45. In June, we had another 40. It's been incredible. It's so rewarding 
you know, we're working so hard, but at the same time, we also need to realize for every child that we're sponsoring, that's a hundred dollars. So we need to fundraise and that it's so important for people to understand that they're saving lives by helping us. Well, and every year, so when I go to the aqua ball, you always have really, really interesting guests, but they're typically, uh, sadly, a lot of the speakers you have in the, the, the recipients of the awards that you give are parents that have lost a child. And now they're trying to help you educate other people so that it does not happen to their family too. Yes, exactly. Our friend Paul DeMello, he, last year he won the Lifesaver Drowning Prevention Award, which you were there for, and he lost his twin sons to drowning. They were only 13 months old. Yeah. Um, he just conti- And that was about 13 years ago, and he just worked so hard. And this year uh, at Aqua Ball, we're going to have his dream chopper is going to be there. And um, he had, he won a contest through Orange County Choppers and Paul Tuttle Sr. built him a motorcycle and he's taking that motorcycle to any drowning prevention events he can and he'll be at Aqua Ball. It'll be so much fun. And he's just trying to do anything he can to prevent this from happening to another family. This year we're um, presenting the award to a pediatrics um, business called Lighthouse Pediatrics, and the doctors there have been so instrumental in drowning prevention with their patients in the community, and they're so deserving of this award this year. That's awesome. Well, congratulations for everything you've done, and who's to say how many thousands of lives you guys all have saved or will save at some point? Just because I look at all the stuff you're doing, and I'm like, wow, you know just getting the education out and the information out. Cause I've lived in Florida for 30 years and I had no idea that our numbers were so staggering. Yes, they're bad. And uh, two days ago, I looked, there were 66 drownings today. It's up to 68. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's just so sad. And we're only beginning the month of September, you know, in Florida here, it's year round, year round swimming, year round water. And so, you know, things don't shut down. People don't stay inside the house. You know, in the winter, like they do up north, you know? Yeah. So what are the things I wanted to ask you about? Um, I don't, I don't own a boat. I'm not a big boater, but I didn't realize that so many drownings happened to Florida. I think Florida's number one, or it's one of the highest rated states for boating drownings for children. I did not realize that. Yes. And, and I think it's because also people don't always put life jackets on them. Right. You have to have a life jacket on your child on a boat. As an adult, I wear a life jacket. I do too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you don't like what they look like, they have those really thin ones now that are pretty cool. You know, they don't feel as cumbersome as as the big ones were years ago. So there's lots of ways uh, to make you comfortable. And if you want to look fashionable, there's so much fun now, you know. And I get that. I get that, you know, it's hot out. You don't necessarily want it on, but these boating accidents are, they can be lethal, you yeah. know? And I think some of it, and even like we're talking about the pool parties and stuff, I think that there's some mentality because even I've had it in certain situations. Well, I'm an adult and I'm right here. I'm right mm-hmm. here watching everything. And we get distracted very easily, unfortunately, in our society. But yes. This is what I want to talk about now, because now I've, I've been sad the last couple of minutes hearing about these numbers, but Aqua Ball is something really, really fun. And what yes. is Aqua Ball this year? Well, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Because the subject matter is so heavy, we decided we would create a dance party. And we want our guests to have a good time, help us raise money to help these families who can't afford swim lessons. And that's our goal. And so we have a great time. It is going to be at the Vineyards Country Club on Saturday, September 23rd. It's only a couple of weeks away. And um, we're going to have the Dream Chopper. Like I said, you can sit on a motorcycle for a little donation. We have approximately 100 silent auction items this year. People are so generous. And we have a few live auction items for travel experiences and dinner for eight in your home. Um, We have a buffet. You get a free drink. You can also buy a table and you get 10 tickets for the price of nine. 
And that has gone really well this year. I think businesses are reaching out and they're giving their employees an experience and a night out and a way to give back in their community. So that's going really well too. We have um, Salt Coast Credit Union, the Community Foundation of Cape Coral have sponsored us. So we're doing really great this year and but we can always use more. We definitely can always use more. The more people we have, the more help we can get and the more lives we can save from drowning. So do you have a lime DJ this year? We do. We Hi. have um, Robert McDonald. He was actually my 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 husband's DJ at our wedding. Oh, okay. Because and- so, you, your music's really good. So dinner dancing and you have a live DJ and he's really good. Yes, he's fabulous. And we have Peter Bush from NBC Two. Oh, he's our M. Yeah, he's our MC. That's such a good sense of humor, doesn't he? Brilliant. Yeah, I was really impressed. He did such a good job last year. He did. And I said to him, I said, you know, we have live auctions. Should I get an auctioneer? He said, No, no, I can do it. I. He goes, I've done that before. I'm like, Okay, that's have fun. fun. <laughs> I he out to my car last year because I got so many good deals. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was a really, really fun night. So I'm looking forward to it again. So now for people who can't make Aqua, Aqua Ball, what can they do to help you? Because I know you also need more sponsors in companies to work with, but also you need volunteers. Uh, yes, I we usually tap into our, uh, our we, we belong to Kiwanis and we usually get the kids from Key Club to help us. I um. Yeah, so they're they're a great help, and they get their service hours. They did a great job last year. And um, anyone who'd like to donate, I mean, normally, like I said, a swim scholarship costs us $100. We usually work with Swimtastic Swim Schools, and a British Swim School just came into Naples, and they want to work with us, too. Nice. And so the parents pay $25, and we pay 100 So you can just go to our website, which is... Uh, www.fldpf.com and you just go to donate and we'll take any donations that will help us. Well, I'll tell you what, Terry, I'm going to put a link to Aquaball and I'm going to put a link to your website in the show notes so people could just tap on it and go right to you. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Terry, for all you do. This is Terry Ballow, president of Florida Drowning Prevention Foundation. Good luck with everything you're doing, Terry. And I just want to say thank you on the behalf of the community for everything that you do here. Thank you, Angelina. And you're very welcome. We're happy that we can do it. And I can't wait to see you at Aqua Ball. Yep. Can't wait to see you guys. This is Angelina Asante signing off for Southwest Florida Online News. 